Y'all don't understand the struggles of being a black man out here in America and not knowing whether or not you're going to make a home to your churn every night because of the police gunning you down. But don't y'all be out here gunning each other down? Okay, but we ain't talking about that. Hell, don't y'all be rapping about killing each other in music? We ain't talking about that either. We can talk about killing each other in rap music, but we don't like the police killing us. Stay on subject, woman. You brought up your kids. Tyrone, you don't even see your kids. And then, yeah, I be trying to see my kids. You know my baby mamas be tripping because I don't want to be with none of them, so they be holding my kids from me. You know that. Okay, but your baby mama saying you don't give them no child support either. Okay, but I still be going out my way to try to see them. They live five minutes from my house, Tyrone. That is out my way, woman. See, y'all, that's what we don't like y'all black women's mouths. Y'all run y'all mouth too much. Y'all always bringing up stuff that's irrelevant. Well, was you cheating on me, Irrelevant? I only cheated on you 10 times. You act like I do it every day, bro. See, that's why we date women of other races, man. Hey, boo, hey. It is Lexus Exodus, leader of the Black Women Exodus. How are y'all doing? And like always, if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe, please share, please comment in the comment section. Let me know that you're listening. Also, if you enjoy listening to my content on the go, the show is now available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts for audio listeners. Go check out my Patreon community where you can get access to bonus episodes and exclusive content and also a private community of like-minded, divested women. It is linked below. Please also follow me on social media platforms. You can check me out everywhere on all platforms at Lexus Exodus. You can find all of this information in the description below. This is another installment of my series called The Blackistan Zoo, where we profile the dusty derelicts, crazy creatures, and animals in Blackistan. Tonight, I want to talk about the mythical BBC. <laughs> hey, y'all, I've been wanting to do this video for quite some time because I often hear Black women all the time say the main reason they can't divest and explore all of their options is due to how much they are in love with and obsessed with the dusty poverty peen. And when I tell y'all I've had this on my to-do list for shows for quite a while, um, I just haven't had the energy to do so or the desire to do so. I mean, loyal patron Philosophy and Letters and several other patrons have been asking me to do this show for some time. I just did not have the desire to unpack this because there's so much to unpack. It is multifaceted, the obsession with intimacy, the obsession with within the white community is very multifaceted and very multi-layered. I didn't have the energy to unpack this, but I finally decided to go ahead and delve in head first and address this head on because I recently had a woman in my private group say that she has a very high libido. And due to this, she has four Haitian peens lined up on standby. And this is so problematic, but it's not uncommon. And if you're listening, I am not trying to attack you, sis, at all. So please do not take this personal. But I think your sentiments are common. And I think that this really reflects a collective um, approach of all Black women sentiments. So I had to address this topic now, how Black women will refuse to divest fully because of the love of Dusty Peen. And because they think it feels good, despite the fact that most of these dudes have small shrimp peens, so the myth of the BBC is just that, a myth, and their sexual capabilities are average at best, despite the fact that the BBC comes with headaches and heartaches, despite the fact that this is poverty peen that turns you into a struggling single mother, 
And despite the fact that this also comes with the highest rates of STDs and HIV. And again, I told you guys, this topic is going to be way too much to unpack the fixation that Black women have with this struggle, peeing, poverty peeing. It's so much to unpack in one show. So this will likely be a multi-part show that really illustrates how problematic the obsession that Black women have with the BBC is and how Black women need to cut the ish and stop obsessing over it. Okay. So first tonight, I want to talk about how the idea of the BBC is just a myth and it is non-existent and most are small. And I know based off of personal experiences, so many other Black women with common sense, if you talk to them, they will tell you this as well. So don't let these dusties fool you into thinking that you're missing out on something by choosing to date out. In fact, if you talk to several Black women, they will admittedly tell you that they've come across several dusties with small packages. And they will also share how they aren't even getting off despite their obsession about the BBC. So let's watch a few clips here where Black women detail their disappointing experiences in the bedroom with this so-called BBC that Black women are so obsessed okay. about. So get to the bedroom, you know, things escalated. We've been making out and stuff like that. And then he you know, proceeds to give me head. I was like, okay, so that was fine. That part was fine, okay? See, what I don't like, sidebar, is when niggas will gas up stuff, like, on the phone and talking through text and all that stuff. Like, they about their life. And then when it's time to go, you don't do none of the shit you said you was going to do. And you ain't like that in real life. So, after, you know, he gave me head and stuff, you know, he proceeds to, you know, put a condom on and stuff like that. When he went to go put the condom on. Mind you, I hadn't seen no, like, this is why y'all y'all need to send pictures and video, at least to me. Because I need the, I need the prelude because I don't want to find out that you got small when it's about to happen. Because I'm be pissed off. And I was pissed off. And I was like, so it was small. So <laughs> he proceeds to, you know... It proceeds to go further, and then I just start laughing. <laughs> I just start laughing while it was happening. He finally, we finally start doing it, and when I tell you, I don't feel nothing. When I tell you, it is so small. You know when it's small because a dude, like, they don't want you to turn around and look at it like they don't want you to. <laughs> like, they be trying to cover it. They be trying to cover it up, but no, I knew it was small because first of all, when he trying to, not, not this from the back. So I takes my hand and I like go behind me and take his, yeah, and yeah, man, when I felt it, I instantly thought in my mind, this do not count. Like, this don't count as a body. I used to date this guy with a small thing. I loved him to death, y'all. But as soon as he touched me, he been done came already. It got to the point where I would have to run in the room, hop on the boy, and damn near fuck the boy whole belly button. Moving out fast. Got the damn room smelling like hog head cheese and fried bologna. Ain't nobody got time for that. I used to try to get a boy head. It looked like I was down there smoking a crack pipe trying to suck that little ass thing. Got a light. It looked like I was smoking a Newport short in the box. Damn, they gave me tonsillitis trying to suck that little ass. I ain't got time for that. It was this boy from Philly. Man, he DM'd me for a little bit. Like, he was like, yeah, girl, let me chill with you, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to eat your blah, blah, blah. And he wasn't that cute, and he was not really my type. But, you know what I'm saying? He was saying all the right things. So I was like, okay, I might give bull a chance. So... He picks me up, whatever. We go to a telly. Alright. It was all good vibes. He was talking in the car, playing music. It was good vibes. He made me he even made me laugh a couple times. We get to the hotel. We in the room. Bull takes his pants off. It was so little. Right? Mind you, this thing is like 6'4, 280 pounds. I'm like, alright. 
I'll give him a chance, you know, because he said he's going to eat my pussy. Maybe I will get a nut out of this. So, we f right? He nuts in 10 seconds. So, he's like, all right, I need a little break. So, I'm like, all right, what do you think? Well, you're taking a break. <laughs> so then Boo goes, oh, I don't eat. I'm like, huh? Like, you was literally just saying you're going to eat. And the messages, all that. He like, yeah, because I knew if I didn't say that, you wouldn't come. What did I tell y'all? What did I tell y'all? We just listened to several women detail how they've experienced less than average at best experiences with whack men. Homegirl said it was so small she reached back and couldn't even feel it. The other said it was so tiny she laughed in his face while they were in the middle of the act. The other said it was so tiny she felt like she was smoking on a crack pipe. <laughs> And these experiences are more common than not. And this is why it boggles my mind that so many Black women refuse to divest and why so many will shame Black women into staying within the community because of these amazing intimate experiences and because of the so-called BBC. First off, BBC can't house you. It can't clothe you nor feed you. Okay. So even, even if it was amazing and as incredible as you guys like to hype it up to be, that don't matter to me because I'm more interested in more substantive things, things that can pay my bills, things that can pay off my housing, clothing, and my car costs. First of all, let's just say it did house, clothe, and feed you. The BBC is just a myth. They're not even big. I know personally, I've seen several. Most are less than average at best. And if you ask many Black women to share their experiences, you'll hear them say the same sentiments as these women we just watched. And let me give you guys some more context about where this BBC myth originates from. So the reason why this myth has been such a prevalent um, idea and stereotype within the community is studies show that the average eggplant size is 5.4 inches. And they also show that whack men, on average, measure at 5.8 inches, okay? 5.8 inches. So this is where we get this myth of this so-called massive big BBC. Ladies, I think we can all agree 5.8 inches is not big at all. But because Dusties don't have much going for themselves, because they are notoriously known for being broke, being highly unemployed, highly incarcerated, lowly educated. They don't have anything going for themselves. So they grasping for straws at this point. And they're going to take whatever semblance of positivity that they can get. So they've taken this stereotype of them being slightly larger than average and have ran with it. And because the community is also full of whack men worshiping women, they promoted and co-signed this idea as well. The reality is most of these dudes is walking around with shrimp pants. The reality is most of these dudes have needle. The reality is most of these dudes have no idea what it takes to satisfy a woman in the bedroom. The reality is most of these dudes are minute men. The reality is most of these women ain't coming. I know so many women personally who have birthed full blown ass children out of their wombs and have never orgasmed before in their lives messing with these dudes. And here's my thing. We know that size isn't everything anyway. Like many women will tell you, even on the off chance that these guys are big, a lot of them just don't know how to screw. There's no foreplay. There's no intimacy. No attempts to get you warmed up. It's just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And that shit ain't even enjoyable. So I don't even know why you guys are so obsessed and fixated with this idea of BBC to the point that you're willing to live in impoverishment and to live in these fatherless homes and to parent these children on your own and to deal with toxic love over the idea of this. Even in the clip we just watched, one of the ladies mentioned how one of the dudes had the nerve to have a shrimp peen and on top of that didn't even go down. Which is wild to me because how you going to, one, be walking around with a pinky, but then don't like to go down on top of that? Like I always say, pick a struggle, Nick Nog. You're supposed to be the master of foreplay if you lack it in size. But this idea is extremely common in Blackistan, which is another reason why I don't see why Black women are so fixated and obsessed with this idea of the mythical BBC 
so they don't divest. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> That was, a, that was a nice one, okay. I'm out here, uh-oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. Keep black women's names out your fucking mouth. I said, keep black women's names out your fucking mouth. Seriously, guys. Are you tired of all the negativity and toxicity Black women are subjected to in media, music, and online? We are ridiculed, denigrated, and berated daily, and I'm sick of it. That's why I created a private safe space for Black women that focuses on divestment, development, and self-empowerment. My private Patreon is for Black women only, and it's a community where we are affirmed, encouraged, supported, and uplifted. For the cost of a coffee, get access to my Patreon community, which consists of a private Discord group to connect with like-minded Black women, add free bonus content, exclusive private lives, and much, much more. You can check it out on patreon.com slash LexisExodus. The link is also listed below. Shout out to my exes. So I want to delve deeper into this and I want to look at this post that illustrates what I'm referring to and demonstrates how oftentimes with these men is unsatisfying, ungratifying, and there's often no foreplay. Okay. And this post has gone viral and it says, I hate and eat my cat to get it wet. I bet. Look here, envelope. Crying emoji, crying emoji, crying emoji. Do y'all see this? And a, a grown whack male has posted this. Y'all tell me what grown heterosexual man is going to find something negative about pleasing a woman in this manner. This is not normal, but this is how it is with these so-called BBCs. Whack men are very selfish lovers. They don't understand the importance of foreplay and intimacy. And a lot of them don't even believe in the female orgasm. So they are in it for themselves. And this is why they'll discuss X so violently. We'll hear them rap about, I'm a beat the cat up. I'm a break your back. I'm a M word, that poom poom. They don't give a damn about how you feel. Or if you feel pleased, essentially what they're doing is using your body to masturbate. And side note, I've let this fly once. I was 18. I was young and dumb. And I thought I was doing something years ago, dating a loser, 10 years of my senior. He was a bum and had nothing going for himself. But I was foolish and naive and didn't know better. Um, and he actually indicated that he didn't like to go down, but still expected me to have sex with him. And I did being young and silly. Thank the Lord that didn't last very long. I wisened up and I cut him off shortly after. But this is how crazy y'all look, Black women, being obsessed with BBC and with men who have openly expressed they are against pleasing you. Most women don't even climax from penetration. And since we know that, and that's a commonly known fact, as a heterosexual adult male, it's very odd that they could be against engaging in the very acts that are almost guaranteed to make you be gratified and to make you climax. It makes no sense to me. Anyways, this is what these women are talking about when they brag about the BBC and when they tout about how, how great it feels and how wonderful it is. No foreplay, no intimacy, no female orgasms, just being beaten up on and him getting off. Here's another clip that illustrates that the BBC is a myth and that X with these fools is not satisfying at all. Get me out of Jamaica because these niggas said they don't eat and his lady don't respect her if you want him to eat pussy. Ziggy Marley, this why you paddling alone, paddling alone, paddling alone, because you're not eating. You rather stay here to eat. Well, then you don't want a green card. Eat some and get a green card. Eat some and get a green card. Child, I can't. 
So what we just watched is a black woman desperately pleading for the whack males in Jamaica to give fellatio to the black women that they are with. I told y'all. So the nogs don't even like to give head. They don't think that sex should be a mutually gratifying experience. They do expect for you to go down on them though. And I'm like, what type of lame ass gay ass ish is that? Heterosexual men who are really straight men love everything about women. Men who are men who are straight men who are attracted to women will lick you from the rooter to the tuta. They will put their faces wherever you ask them to. Then as you're the better. They will do some freaky things. <laughs> so the fact that these dusties are openly expressing their disdain for going down on women is pretty crazy to me. And here's the thing. I know that this is something that is very prevalent in Jamaican males. This is not something that's exclusive to Caribbean and Jamaican men, though. A lot of African-American men feel like this as well. I remember very vividly being a young adult that this was something that was taboo. And this was something that white men would never admit that they did. And like I said, years ago, I even dated a Dusty 10 years my senior who said this as well. Never again. But a lot of these Dusties roll like that. And this is why I'm not sure how black women are touting about how good the X is and how good BBC is when many of them could care less about satisfying you. Okay, so let's keep going. I want to look at this next clip where a very prominent Negro sphere, manosphere, Nick Nog illustrates this as well. I'm yeah. talking about when guys are like out here eating box for an hour and do, fingering the crap yeah, out of her yeah, and that's... doing all this extra yeah. like, to get her off. Okay. It's OD. Yeah. Like it should be, she should be able to get off on missionary alone, bro. I'm going to like, my, right. dog my thing it. is not an extra. It's, I'm not even going to say, I feel like I know that her ejaculating is not that important. There's a reason why to create life, a man needs to ejaculate, not a woman. So, <laughs> so a woman's ejaculation isn't that important. This is the BBC. Remember I told you it's like, they're using your body to masturbate. This is exactly what I mean. And let's be clear and reiterate, it is a joke that we are even referring to this as a BBC because most of them ain't even packing. Funky and fuck boy are giving little dick energy. They are not packing. Most of them are not. I remember catching my son's father using a penis pump. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. I hope he don't ever listen to this show because he gonna hate me. But for real, this dude, Funky and fuck boy are giving shrimp peen energy. Several others I messed with had the nerve to use a Magnum condom on top of that. I remember being so confused previously, like the, the rubber is sagging, fool. Like, why are we even doing this? But it's because they really have internalized this myth of having BBCs, even with a little 5.8 inches that they have on average. Did y'all hear this F boy? He said explicitly not to ever try to satisfy a woman because he don't even believe in the female climax. Listen up, black woman. This is how they are. And this is why I'm going to need y'all to stop this brainwashing and to stop being so fixated and stop this obsession over this mythical idea of the BBC y'all are so staunchly attached to. Okay, I want to look at this last fool. He an old geriatric Dusty with the same ideology who talks about women climaxing not being a real thing. Right. Any woman that climaxing, that's the right word, right, Jay? I know you want to know. You're a virgin. <laughs> virgin don't know anything. <laughs> Any woman that's climaxing, climaxing is becoming a man because it's not normal for women to do that. You think when women act like they're doing that, they're lying? Uh, I never thought about it, but you you never know. Yeah, because they'll be making a man think he's really doing an amazing job. <laughs> yeah, women, don't let, I don't know if y'all doing that or not, but don't even try. Because if it were natural, you'd naturally do it. But the fact you're trying to make something happen, you're becoming a man. The man is turning you into a man. Not a real man. <laughs> a drag queen man. What is this mumbling, bumbling, geriatric, old and decrepit, hit the wall ass, saggy ball, have an ass nigga talking about? They should have never given you niggas podcasts. Never. Y'all don't deserve them. 
Jesse Lee Peterson is so interesting to me because this man makes tons of money off of YouTube. He currently has about 300,000 followers. And for the life of me, I can't understand why. This mumbling, bumbling, lips having ass mush mouth fool. I'm pretty sure he got his footing by pandering to white conservatives and being a broken buck. I mean, we saw the gay allegations that came out about him recently, which makes a lot of sense in hindsight why he has been so vocal about his disdain for women and why he's on here talking about women climaxing isn't real. It's because he was busy busting down bussy. He don't believe in the female orgasm because he's busy giving them to other men. Like, who wants to hear our closeted Paul Paul talk about orgasms? Ew, that's disgusting. Women's orgasms are very real. I know because I've had several of them and in several different ways. But again, Jesse wouldn't know that because his impotent limp peen ain't making anybody come except for the men that he fucks in the closet. But do y'all see how selfish and idiotic and ridiculous Dusty sound? And this is what Black women will glorify when they talk about the BBC, though. This is that BBC y'all be ranting and raving about, that y'all be fighting other women over, that y'all be tolerating toxic struggle love and side babies and diseases and cheating over. This that poverty teen y'all be lusting after and obsessing over, refusing to divest because you're so fixated on this mess. This mythical BBC that really only is 5.8 inches on average that don't believe in the female orgasm, fellatio, or foreplay. And if you're lucky and you come across the rarity of a big one, it still often ain't going to be mutually gratifying because these dusties are violent and going to be trying to break your back and tear your walls down and shoot the club up and violent-ish like that. I can't. I'm going to need for Black women to get over this idea of dusty mythical BBCs and look for something that's more substantive. It's time to divest, y'all. We need to look for traits that are more meaningful than just intercourse. All right, that's all I got. Like I said, there's so much to unpack here. This will be a multi-part series. When we come back, I'll continue this discussion and we'll talk about why Black women need to divest from this mythical BBC because it is unhygienic and it often comes with a slew of diseases and STDs. And just a disclaimer, I may not be able to keep these shows on YouTube because y'all know how they are about topics like this, but we will see. Anyways, what are your thoughts about tonight's subject matter? Why are Black women so obsessed and fixated with BBC, even when it's mediocre at best? Even when it doesn't marry them and it mistreats them and it comes with trials and tribulations? Sign off below. Until next time, see you guys. Bye. I don't give a fuck. Even if you think I should, bitch, nigga, I don't If y'all come across a red iPhone, can you please bring it to the sound stage? Red iPhone, appreciate it.